Well, good afternoon, everybody. I don't know how many people have ever attended any one of my presentations in the past, uh, but primarily things that you should know is that I am a soil scientist. I focus primarily on soil nutrient cycles and how fertilizers work. Um, I also work with small grains, but in recent years, we've been working more and more with the peony industry to help come up with some management issues on how to solve growers' problems, mostly because there is no manual on how to grow peonies commercially, and so we're trying to develop that as we go along. Um, the other things that I always like to bring up, especially when it comes to management, is two main points to sort of keep in the back of your minds. The first one is time management. Whenever you're doing something to your farm or your garden from the standpoint of adding water or fertilizers or whatever, things don't happen immediately, they take time. And depending on what you're doing, some of that time could be as quick as a couple hours or it could be a few years before you finally get a result. So keep that in the back of your mind. The other thing is, is that everything is always interdependent. So if you're adding, say, fresh compost to provide nutrients, you're changing a lot of other things other than the nutrient load within that. And from there, we'll go to the first question. Okay, so the first one is, um, I had my peonies in a half whiskey barrel last summer. They never bloomed, I'm not sure why this is. So when uh, this person bought the half barrel, they noticed that um, some white mold and it's in the sun for most of the day. Can you offer some tips? Usually a whiskey barrel for peonies isn't gonna work real well. Uh, peony roots tend to grow out sideways and so they're gonna need a very large soil resource for the water and the nutrients to also move sideways and your whiskey barrel is basically providing a barrier for that to happen. I would doubt that anything to do with the white mold had a problem at all. Um, if you have uh, the ability to do this, I would dig the peony out, out and put it in the ground somewhere so that you can enjoy flowers this year. Okay. All right, our next question is, um, let's see here. Uh, this person is very new to peony growing, um, third year and hoping for blooms. One of her plants is much smaller than the others and she's wondering, is it uh, more exposed to the sun and maybe has less nutrients in that section of bed? That I would doubt. Uh, one of the things, depending on where you bought your roots from, is that this could be a completely different plant. Um, we've had this issue with root suppliers in the past from other locations where not everything is necessarily the same variety and so you can get something that looks like it but not quite. So that could be it. Uh, the second thing is is that it's not going to be any sun related issue. Uh, your soil is going to have a lot of variability to it naturally and so yeah it could very well be in a spot which has a little less nutrients, a little less water for whatever reason. Um, but I wouldn't necessarily worry about trying to do something special for that one and only one plant. Treat your field the same as you do all the rest of them. Okay, um, so uh, there's a curiosity about modifying tomato cages with wire cutters to use for peonies. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Tomato cages work great just as they is. You don't need to worry about uh, wire cutters for anything. The biggest issue is that this is a cone shape, and so the part that goes into the soil, the three prongs or four prongs, depending on the size of your cage, might be poking holes in the peony root. So if you're gonna be doing any modification, bend them out straight rather than trying to push them directly through the center of the plant, because more than likely you'll damage the, uh, the root itself. Um, depending on how many peonies you have in a row, sometimes it's easier to put in a couple of stakes with basically a T in them and just stringing some uh, nylon string between the two and hold everything up all at the same time. All right, thank you. Um, how close can low-lying plants and things like poppies be to peonies? Uh, her peonies um, 
with plants closer by seem to be much taller and better developed, but uh, here things should be moved back. So um, this person has bachelor buttons and poppies by one, and the other has a nice patch of savory or tarragon. Um, so what do you think about size of other plants in relation to the peony? Peony roots will, like I said before, will grow out sideways from the center of the plant, main plant. And when they contact something else, whether it be a planted uh, crop that you're looking for or even a weed, then you have competition going on for that nutrients and water that's in that soil. Um, within a commercial production, peonies are usually planted anywhere from two to three feet apart from any other plant, just to reduce that competition. Um, the other issue is, is if you've got things next to your peony plant and you wind up fertilizing the peony plant, well then the more shallow rooted annuals and perennials are going to wind up getting the nutrients before the peony does. So there's some competition issues with that. Um, normally I would recommend planting a peony about two feet away from just about anything else. Okay, great. Um, so let's see where we are. Uh, this person has a peony that was planted in the fall of 2018 and it's right where the fence is going to be installed. So it needs to be moved. So what's the best way to move it considering it's already started coming up? And is there a high likelihood that it will not survive being transplanted? It could very well be. Uh, it's not the main root itself that's providing all the nutrients, but rather the very small feeder roots that come off of that that's getting most of the nutrients. If you want to dig this thing up, then the first thing you're going to have to do is make sure you go about two feet away from the center. In other words, you're going to have a huge hole that you're going to have to dig this out of and then find a bunch of buddies to help pick the thing up out of the ground and put it in a wheelbarrow and move it. However, the best time to do this would be in the fall after everything has senesced and the tops have died back. Don't try digging it up now or you'll guarantee you get nothing. Okay. Um, this person says uh, they planted their first crop of peony roots last fall. Um, when will they start to show and when and how should they be harvested? Okay, if you planted them in the fall, the biggest issue we had going into the fall was the fact that we were coming off of a very strong drought last year. The other issue, and this is something that's exceedingly important for everybody who has peony roots, is that you need to have a good insulation cover on the soil going into the winter. In other words, the snow. And as we all learned this winter, we had a lot of freeze thaw going all the way into December. Anytime you lose that insulation layer above the peony roots, you have the possibility of frost damage on the roots themselves. So when do they come up this spring? This is gonna be one of those, well, wait and see what's coming up. Um, it could be late, it could be next day, it could be today for all we know. If you want to check, go out to where you planted one and very gently dig down to where the root is. You should start to see elongation on the buds if it's still alive. But like I said, you got to be really gentle. You don't want to knock these things off and you don't want to damage the feeder roots because that'll put things back a little later. If they're still alive, just leave them alone and let them go. Your first commercial harvest on a peony stem will be anywhere from three to five years from the date that you planted it. So you're not gonna get much this year other than some pretty flowers to harvest every now and then to take inside your own house. Otherwise, you're gonna have to wait a long time for these things to get to a point where they're commercially harvestable. Okay, great. Now we have a series of a few questions here. So starting out, this person has six peonies that are robust and healthy starting their ninth year in the same spot. So first question is, um, do they need to be separated or can they just be let be? Let them go. Um, unless you want to create more peonies uh, from the same ones that you have, just let them go. 
Um, I'm originally from the Midwest in Iowa, and my grandparents had a peony plant that was 30 years old and doing well just by itself, all of the, the way it was. You didn't have to do anything to it. Don't worry about digging it up. Don't worry about dividing it unless you want to make more peonies somewhere else. The problem is that every time you dig one up and every time you slice into that root, there's a possibility then for fungal infections and for damage to the root where you don't get anything back. So if you want more peonies, I think the easiest thing to do is just to buy more roots and leave the ones you have in the ground the way they are. Okay, great. Um, so um, second or third buds lower down on the stem are often noticed, but they never, um, never produce a, a large enough bloom. Um, can they make a second bloom in Alaska? They will, depending on the variety. However, if you want really good large blooms, everything on the sides should be disbudded as soon as you see them. There's also going to be a lot of varieties that will produce basically a bud that doesn't do anything. It never pops open. So those also should be taken off. So basically, what you're trying to do is leave the main bud at the very top and just take all the side ones off and get a good flower at the top. Great. Okay, Ken, um, let's see, is there specific peony fertilizer and how frequently do you suggest fertilizing to get optimum blooms? Okay, there is no such thing as a specific peony fertilizer. What you should do is to collect a soil sample from your peonies, send it off to a lab to get it tested, and then contact me, sending me an electronic copy of the lab results, and I will make up a blend for you on what you need for your garden. The reason there isn't a specific blend is that your farm could be vastly different from your next door neighbor from the standpoint of nutrients required for the exact same plant. And so what we try to do is to come up with something specialized for your plants based on what your soil already has. And just like everything else that you need to grow in your garden, these should be fertilized every single year with what they need. Okay, great. Um, this person says they typically let all foliage stay, thinking it's making energy for the roots and blossoms, but should, um, should I prune some of them out to divert energy to blooming? You should leave it all there unless it starts to look kind of goofy. If you see something that doesn't look normal, snap that off and completely remove it. Otherwise, yes, leave the leaves going and the stems even if they don't have a flower bud on them. Your main part, part of the plant that is going to carry you over from one year to the next is the root. And that's where all the nutrients are being translocated to in the fall after flowering is done. So the more opportunity that you have green leaves to be doing that, the better off your plant is going to be going into the fall and survive the winter. In the fall though, once everything starts to senesce and turn color, remove everything. Don't let anything sit anywhere near your peas and don't put that stuff into a compost pile. What might be in the leaves is something called botrytis, which is a fungal infection. And sometimes they are on high, you can't see them real well, but they're there anyway. If you leave it sit on the soil over the winter, then it spreads on the soil through the plant detritus and then infects a great deal more peonies next spring. So just remove everything in the fall after it starts to turn brown. Okay, great. Um, some of my peony shoots already have buds, others don't. Is this a product of variety? And is there a variety of peony that does not grow well in Alaska? There are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of varieties of peonies. And the only thing that I can say from the standpoint of what doesn't grow well in Alaska is to contact somebody from the Alaska Peony Society who has tried some of these. Um, otherwise, it's gonna be a hit and miss. Some of the things that do real well that are more traditional are the Sarah Bernhardt's, which are pink, and the Duchess de Moray's, which are white. Those grow just about everywhere in the whole state of Alaska and they do really well. Otherwise, yeah, you're going to find a lot of variety difference based on the number of buds you have, based on the color of the plant, and based upon where it's being grown. 
Uh, our research has been done north of the Alaska Range in the Fairbanks, North Pole, Delta Junction areas, south of the Alaska Range here in the Matsu, and on the Kenai Peninsula. And we're finding that the exact same varieties act differently in each of those three regions. And so we have to treat them differently. So from the standpoint of what you have at your field or in your garden, just go with what you have and don't worry about the big differences at this point in time. Usually, if you have good weather, if you have good soil fertility, everything will catch up about the time they start to bud out and ready to harvest for flowers anyway, which is going to be sometime in June, July. Great. Uh, when can we plant more peony roots? Is June okay? And what month is the latest to plant? I would not plant in June simply because June is going to be a very hot month. It's going to require lots of water and the likelihood of these roots actually surviving to start producing shoots is going to be real slim. So, Secondly, them? they're going to have to go into them? the winter. Yeah. So my best statement is to either plant them in the fall, like late September, or plant them real early, like in the first part of May, whenever you can start digging around in the soil. Don't do it in the middle of summer. Okay, um, so this person says they've heard when you get peony roots in the spring, it's better to plant them in a two gallon pot for the summer and then place them in the ground in the fall. Why is it better to wait until fall to put them in the ground? If you go into the fall, then everything's done. You don't have to worry about trying to get everything done in the spring. Um, the window of opportunity to get all of your peony roots in the ground, everything fertilized, everything ready to go is exceedingly short. So if you get a big chunk of your work out of the way in the fall, then that's great. However, don't try to keep the peony root going in a pot. If you get it in the spring, plant it in the spring. Otherwise, wait until fall to even order peonies and get them. Don't try to keep them going in a pot. They're not gonna do real well. Okay. Um, so this person has a peony plant in their yard that is close to 50 years old, but it does not get as big as it used to. How can they regenerate it, rejuvenate it? Well, what you have, if you think about how peonies grow, they start in the middle with the original root, which might be about as big as your fist when it was planted. As it grows, new growth occurs on the ends of the roots. And so that storage root is getting bigger the farther away from the main center it gets. And so the center of an old peony plant, and by old, I'm talking anything about 20 years old and up, is basically not producing stems and it's not producing more roots. And so therefore it doesn't look as good as it did before that. Here again though, a 50 year old peony plant can have roots that go out six feet from the center. And so if you wanna dig this up, it's gonna be a lot of work to get involved in doing that. You're gonna to have to start digging chunks of it out, you know, do this again in the fall to try to move things or, just live with the way it is because it's gonna be a 50 year old plant and that's pretty cool. You don't wanna necessarily kill it by digging up all these sections and trying to move them. There's actually no way to bring back the middle of a peony plant that's that old. You just have to live with it. Okay. What is the best way to remove side buds or all buds in the case of young plants? Snapping them or cutting with a knife or scissors? Use these two pieces of implements that you were born with. Just snap and snap them off. If you cut things, you're going to have to sterilize the knife or the pair of clippers between each cut, and that's going to be exceedingly time consuming. So all I got to do is just snap them off. At the same time, you should be carrying some sort of a bag around with you that you can put these in. Don't let dead detritus fall on the ground next to the peony plant because that's then gonna be a source for fungal infections to infect the rest of the plant. So take everything out of the field, remove it. But it's real easy to just disbud side buds with your fingers, just snap them off. Okay, great. Uh, can you give us some tips on planting nursery peonies? Nursery peonies from the standpoint of you're going to dig these up to sell later. I'm not exactly sure the difference here. <coughs> because if you're going to be digging these up to sell the roots, then basically they're not going to be in the ground very long. You're just going to be putting them there until they can increase in size. Usually the lower 48 peony root sales people 
let these things grow for maybe two to three years before they dig them up. And then they knock all the soil off. They'll then slice them up into you know a fist-sized chunk where they might have anywhere from three to five eyes or buds on them. Uh, they'll put them in cold storage to sort of slow down decomposition, and then they'll ship them to people who want to grow them later. So if that's what you're shooting for, then you can plant these a little closer together because you're going to be digging them up in three years. They don't have to be two to three feet apart. You can put them about um, a foot to 18 inches apart in a row and just make it easy to dig. At the same time, they have very specialized equipment. You cannot use a potato digger to dig these. So if you don't have a whole lot of them, you're going to have to be using a fork or a spade, to dig these up and knock the soil off. Uh, here again, you're going to have to be very careful that you don't damage the roots as you dig them up to move. Uh, other than that, it's just go as you go. Okay, great. I think you already mentioned uh, this uh, earlier, but let's revisit it a little bit. Uh, after cutting stems down to the ground in the fall, do we need to mulch the area? If you can keep it mulch on, yes. The biggest issue that I've had around here is the winter winds blowing it all off before you can, you know, stake it down or anything. Um, straw is a great mulch, but how do you keep straw on because it's exceedingly lightweight? Uh, if you can have some kind of, uh, um, you know, if you're small enough of a plot area, you can buy that bird netting that people put on their apple trees to keep the moose from eating the apple stems off. Um, and then stake that down so the straw doesn't blow away. That's one way to do things. Um, usually the mulch comes from the snow that hopefully stays on and doesn't blow away or melt off. But even that is difficult to predict. Um, having something up that you could use as a snow fence that would trap snow behind it, that might work. But there again, it's going to be a fair amount of labor involved in setting that up. Um, large peeny, peeny fields don't necessarily have that option. Um, sometimes you can put things like compost on there that will then absorb enough water and freeze in place, but then that has to be raked off in the fall or in the spring rather. And if you have peony buds coming up, then raking causes a certain amount of damage to the buds. So it's gonna be primarily up to you what you think you can get away with labor-wise and expense-wise that would still keep the peonies going through the winter. Okay, um, and when is the best time to fertilize? Usually in the spring. Um, a lot of people will try to do portion of their fertilizer in the fall, but here again, think about this for a minute. Most people also have peonies in a raised bed and their walkways are then at a lower elevation. Well, the ground is gonna freeze because you can't incorporate the fertilizer, it's on the surface. And so in the springtime when the snow does melt, anything that's on the surface is gonna flow downhill. So it's gonna flow off of those beds, it's gonna flow down into the alleyways and it's gonna fertilize the weeds you have growing in the alleyways and not the peonies. So I always say to put the fertilizer on in the spring, especially to do it early in the spring before the buds even start poking up out of the ground. The best thing to do in that case is to try and get as much of that fertilizer around the base of the plant, but not touching the plant, because again, the feeder roots are gonna be on the outside, not the inside of the plant itself. And then lightly scuff that fertilizer into the soil top inch or so. You don't want to go real deep on this with any kind of a tillage type tool. Um, one of the things that I've seen some local growers use that work real well is one of those little garden weasel weeders. Um, I don't know if anybody's familiar with that, but it basically has a series of rolling spiked teeth and they just lightly scuff the soil after fertilizing to sort of incorporate that as best as possible. But springtime, definitely. Okay. Um, <coughs> now when blooms start shedding, should the fallen petals be picked up? That's going to be a little hard to do. If you've got a small amount of peonies, then yeah, because you'll probably notice in the past that the petals will start to turn brown and slimy when they're on the ground. Well, that's a fungus. And if that fungus gets to the plant, it can then infect the roots and everything else, and then you're going to have a lot of serious issue. Um, if you've only got two or three plants, that's going to be real easy to do. But if you've got two or three acres, it's not. So it's going to be up to you and how much work you want to do with it. 
Um, the other aspect of it is, and I've seen some of these things on the internet, is that you can make various teas and whatnot out of the peony petals themselves. So if you want to go that route, maybe you could be harvesting them before they fall off. Um, just play with it and see what you can do. Okay. Um, this person says their third year and hoping for blooms, just a small perennial garden. One of the plants is much smaller than the others. Wondering if it's more exposed, oh, let's see. They already asked that question. More exposed to sun and maybe has less nutrients. Um, and when is the best time to split? If you're gonna split them, if you wanna split, do it in the fall after everything's all done. If you do it now, you most likely kill both, the, both your splits or however many times you wanna split it. Here again, if the peony itself isn't any more than five years old, trying to dig up peony older than that to make splits is gonna be exceedingly difficult. So unless you uh, really want something to do that's gonna take weeks to accomplish, I wouldn't bother trying to split anything that's older than about five years. Uh, keep it small and keep it simple. Here again, if you're looking for that specific variety because you like the color, it might be easier just to buy it from somewhere else that already has that particular color at a size that's easy without having to damage the ones that you currently have. On the other hand, if you want to go into business selling peony roots, then here again, like we kind of talked about before as a nursery camp uh, type of a deal, is plant them closer together, dig them up when you're three to five years old, slice things up, and then sell the roots as they are. Okay, um, let's see. Uh, this person bought some growing plants from a nursery is wondering the best way to transplant into the garden. Well, you should be doing that immediately. Uh, but the best way to transplant growing plants is something that already has stems and shoots coming up out of the ground or, or even if it might have been flowering from something else in the past is to do it right away. Dig a hole that's about a foot deep Mix in whatever it is you want to add from the standpoint of your soil additives, whether it's compost, whether it's fertilizers, whether it's organic matter, whatever you want, lime. Mix that into the entire hole with the soil already in it. In other words, take the soil out, add stuff to a bucket with the soil, stir it all together, pour the soil back into the hole. Then scoop out about three to five inches of soil and plant your peony in that and cover the top so that the root itself is about two to three inches from the surface of the soil. You don't want to plant them too deep because if you do, then they're not going to come back the next year. So make it simple, make it short, make it easy from the standpoint of making sure you've got your nutrients and everything in the soil already because after it's established, adding anything afterwards on the surface is basically relying on nature to make it go down to the roots and that's not necessarily happening every time. So that's why I say dig a hole, it's a foot deep, mix everything into that hole with the soil, then scoop out a little bit of that soil, plant your peony in it, cover it with the dirt. Great. Um, this person just has a um, uh, comment says they use spruce bark boughs over their peonies to hold the mulch and it works great. Cool. Anything that's not going to blow away is good. Perfect. Um, so this person has eight plants with strong southern exposure started from roots four years ago. Four to seven stems each. And the same as last year. Um, did they get too hot or dry? Last year was brutal. How can we encourage more stems? Well, last year, like I said before at the beginning, we had a drought going into things. So unless you really, really, really watered a lot during the summer, going into the fall, they were definitely going to be in some kind of a physiologic stress to start with. Secondly, I don't know whether or not you had snow cover all the time, but at least out of my place, I was getting that freeze thaw all the way into December. And every time that happened, then the roots could be exposed to a freeze before the snow was on to cover them up and insulate everything. And that's going to cause a stress. So I wouldn't necessarily worry about the fact that you have fewer stems this year than you did 
last year, I would be exceedingly thankful that they're still alive this year from what happened last year. And just go through your ordinary fertilizing watering re regime that you normally do, and those roots will come back. Remember that this year's flower buds were formed last year on the roots. And so the stress that they were going into is probably more indicative of the fact that you got smaller or fewer stems this year than you did in previous years. Anyway, this year's buds are gonna be producing next year's stems. And so the best you can do from the standpoint of your plant physiology is just to keep an eye on it, make sure that they're watered real well, but not overwatered. make sure that they have the fertilizer, and then somehow or another cover them with something to carry them through those freeze-thaw cycles in the early winter. Great, okay, so just for clarity, um, uh, peonies should be split when they're young? Yes, if you wait until they're bigger than about five years old, they're going to be exceedingly difficult to dig up and split effectively. You have a greater potential to damage the roots trying to dig up something that's going to be two to three feet in diameter and 18 inches to two feet deep. Think about how heavy that soil mass is going to be, let alone trying to pull the peony root out of there to start slicing it up. If you go around the outside of a very large plant and just start chopping off chunks to split, the chunks might survive real well, but you've now opened up wounds in the existing plant that can be, be infections for fungus, uh, all sorts of plant diseases, and so then your main plant might die. So my best recommendation is to not worry about dividing up really large plants unless you want to challenge and see what happens which is okay, um, but rather to, if you're gonna do commercial harvesting of peony roots, to do it when they're relatively small and easier to manipulate with less damage, or just buy new varieties from a lower 48 producer and plant those. Okay, um, here's a question about pinching off buds for the first few years to establish roots. So if they want to move the peonies within three years of planting a root, do they have to start that time frame over again on waiting to let the plant bloom? The only buds that you should be removing, regardless of whether this is going to be something you're going to leave established for a lot of years or is something that you're going to want to dig up in three to five years, is to take the side buds off. Leave the main stem flower. The reason for this is you will get to see what the color is. And it might sound kind of a stupid question, but there's an awful lot of peonies that are supposed to be white flowered and are in the lower 48, yet over time in Alaska will actually develop a pink center. And so this is something you're going to have to watch and maintain notes on through the growing seasons. Snap off the side buds. Snapping all of them off aren't going to help the root grow any better. It's going to be the leaves and everything else that's on the plant that helps the root grow more. Taking off the side buds means that that root won't have to expend as much energy into trying to make flowers out of all of them. But let the main bud go and flower so you can observe what the color is over time and whether it changes any. Okay, so um, then cutting the buds back um, doesn't really help the root system? No, it won't help the root system at all. All that does is push the energy into the other flower buds. Um, <clears throat> to compensate for not having flower buds, it'll wind up producing more leaves. So basically, you're still going to get vegetative growth, even if you take all the flower buds off. So that's not going to help much at all. Just take the side buds off, let it expand its energy into the main bud, and just leave that go. Okay. Um, what are some good companions to peonies, and how close should they be? I wouldn't be planting anything with a peony within the root system itself because that's going to cause complications from the standpoint of competition for nutrients and water. Um, at the same time, if you don't want to do a whole lot of weeding, then some things that I've seen a lot of people do is to use what's called white Dutch clover. That is a short height 
clover that is a perennial that helps to smother other weeds. You don't have to worry about uh, competition from grasses, things of that sort, as much. You're not gonna be eliminating all the weeds with something like that, but that just makes something a little easier to work with. Um, secondly, if you want the benefit of that clover to provide nitrogen for your peony, then basically what you're gonna have to do when you buy the clover is to buy the correct rhizobium bacteria to inoculate the seed so that with the seed and then and in the fall mow everything get in there with a weed whacker after you've taken the peony stems off and mow it all because it's the dead and dying clover biomass that then adds nitrogen to the soil for the peony to use in future years okay um, do voles bother peony roots? Oh yeah, voles, mice, um, anything that you, if you're trying to store peonies in your garage until you can plant them, anything will get in there and chew on that, we'll have a grand time. This is primarily because of, it's an energy source. And my light just disappeared. Anyway, um, there they go. You gotta move around to make them work. Uh, so the best thing in the world to do is to make sure that they're buried to the correct depth and not too close to the surface. Uh, we've had some very Stephen Kingish type things going on with a peony grower in Homer one year who had covered everything in her field with that Tipar landscape cloth, basically as weed control. And when we stepped on the cloth to go out and look at some of her peas, which weren't looking very good, the whole cloth started to move and wiggle because basically you had this monster nest of mice and voles underneath it. And it, uh, it was made a mess. So that's something you do have to watch out for, yes. That sounds lovely. No. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, so most of the plants in the big box stores are so far ahead of the ones in the ground here. Um, some actually already have flowers. How does this advanced state of growth affect the plants when they're planted in Alaska? What it'll do that very first year is it's going to set it back. If you take any plant, regardless of whether it's a peony, if it's already in the flowering stage and you pop it out of the pot, or if it's a bare root and you put that into the ground, basically you're going to have transplant shock. I'm sure a lot of you who do home gardening are much aware of what transplant shock does. It sets things back. That isn't necessarily going to be the biggest issue except for the time frame of when you put that in the ground. We kind of talked about this a little bit before. If you're going to be planting these things that should have been in the ground already, but if you don't have the time now, then you should be waiting until fall to even buy anything to put into the ground and then cut off all the tops and plant just the root. Um, what might happen next year because of that transplant shock is anybody's guess but I can guarantee you they're not gonna look real pretty for the first year or so until that peony root becomes somewhat established in its new location. Uh, the biggest issue that I've had is uh, mothers getting Mother's Day peonies in, in a pot that are already flowering, it looked great and wonderful, and then they wanna leave them there because it looked great and wonderful, and now is getting to a point where it's almost too late to try to put them in the ground, but you can still do it, um, try it, take the flower off definitely, uh, let and see what happens if the leaves start to look really wilty, water the heck out of it, keep an eye on it. If the leaves keep looking bad, hard, cut all the vegetation off the top, put something there that you can identify that you've got a peony root there for next year and then see what comes up next spring. Okay, um, do you have some tips on how to best prevent pests all over the flowers? Um, i.e. ants? Ants, believe it or not, are not a pest of peonies. Uh, neither are the yellow jackets or the bees that go there. What they're doing, if anybody's had a peony root, just the bud is about ready to burst open in flower, notice it's exceedingly sticky. That is basically a nectar and the peony is using that to attract ants and attract bees and attract yellow jackets because it's an energy source for them. 
the insects that I just mentioned will also then start to compete with other insects that are the bad ones. And so this is a natural way of trying to eliminate the insects you don't want on peonies. Let the ants go, they're not hurting anything. Don't sweep off the bees, don't sweep off the yellow jackets, just walk gingerly around them and let them do their thing. Um, yellow jackets actually love things like aphids and that's one of the things you wanna to try to get rid of. Okay, great. Um, so this person is wondering about the depth of roots. Um, they heard that uh, they shouldn't be too deep, but right. they're wondering if the tubers should be visible. No, you want to cover the plant roots. The, they're not really a tuber, but the plant roots with about two to three inches of soil. Don't plant the tops any deeper than that, because if they are, then the buds as they break out and start growing in the spring will never make it to the surface to start to photosynthesize and they'll die in the soil. And that's not what you wanna have happen. Secondly, and I know this sounds kind of silly, but I've had a lot of commercial peony growers hire a bunch of kids to plant the roots. You gotta make sure that the buds are facing up when you plant them. Don't put them facing down because then that kills everything. And so basically what this person had to do was follow along his entire planting crew to make sure that that was happening correctly, which meant that they could have been doing this all along by themselves and could have saved a lot of time, you know, renting and hiring kids to help out. But just make sure that there's about two to three inches of soil on top and that's good. Okay, it looks like we are caught up with questions. So if anybody has any more they wanna throw into the chat box, please feel free to do so. Um, we have about 15 more minutes or so. Um, Bob, do you have, with all these questions, has something been um, spurred that you think you might wanna share with us? The only other thing that I can think of, and here again, I'm talking mostly from the standpoint of commercial producers, so people who have acres of peonies in the ground, is that putting them near something that has shade, so for example, your shade trees or whatever, they will actually start to bend away from the trees and go towards the light. Peonies need to be planted in full sun. Uh, you can plant them in the shade, you know, north side of a house, they'll still do fairly well, but they're not going to do as good as if they are somewhere on the south facing slopes. The second thing is, is that related back to the insects, one of the ones that are showing up to be a problem are thrips and lycus bugs. And the lycus bugs that are attacking the peonies will actually drill little holes in the bud itself as the flower is about ready to open and that doesn't necessarily kill the peony but it makes it rather unsightly to look at if you have a hole that hole then starts browning it doesn't look good from a commercial standpoint you can't sell it but if you want to take these and put them in your house they're still okay the lagus bugs have an alternate host which is birch trees so here again, if you have birch trees anywhere close to your peonies, you might want to keep an eye out on for lycus bugs. They basically look like a, a shield bug, you know, if anybody's familiar with that. Um, if you have any questions with any of the insects you see on them, take a picture and contact the IPM scout here at the extension, and they'll help you identify that. Thrips are exceedingly small. They're about the size of the head of a pin. And these guys can actually get in there and start chewing away at the bud, making it basically abort and not flower. The unfortunate thing is, is that if anybody has a garden, thrips also love every member of the brassica species. So if you have cabbage, cauliflower, broccoli, kale, Brussels sprouts, you're gonna have thrips on it. So something that you might wanna consider doing if you haven't planted any peonies yet, is to make sure they're not close to your vegetable garden because that's one way to prevent that sort of damage. Um, the other thing is that's gonna be an issue is birds that are attracted to red colors. I don't know how many people if you have robins that wind up attacking your strawberries and your currants and your raspberries when they're ripe. Well, if you have red colored peonies, they will also start landing on them and start poking holes in them thinking that that's something to eat when in reality it isn't. Usually they don't come back and do more damage, but they can poke a number of holes in a small plot of red peonies. Kansas is an example. They seem to attack that relatively quickly. Um, so other than that, 
uh, some of the things that you mean to uh, <clears throat> work with a lot of these things is uh, weed control around the base. Um, obviously, you don't want to go in there with a weed whacker and start mowing things down without whacking your plants down. Um, cover crops, things along that line with the white Dutch clover is about the only way you go around doing that. Um, if you wind up getting things like uh, quack grass, which is a perennial grass, if you go and pull the top stems, you wind up leaving the roots in the ground and you wind up with 50 uh, quack grass coming up to attend the funeral. So it's one of those things you never get rid of. Um, there are no registered herbicides for peonies in Alaska. I got to emphasize that. However, we are conducting research into that to find one that is suitable that we can get registered for peonies in Alaska. So the only way to go about getting rid of weeds is to use your hands. Get on your hands and knees and start pulling them out. And here again, pull out the big ones, but leave the little ones. Um, if you see things like um, moss growing on your raised beds around your peonies, that's usually a pH indicator, and peonies don't like acidic soils. So here again, you're going to have to worry about modifying that with lime, but you have peony roots in the ground. So you're going to be putting this on the surface and hopefully watering it in so that it works better. And that could take years to react. Um, secondly, peonies do not like wet feet, which is why most people raise them on a raised bed or something where the water will not stand for a long period of time. We had experience with one peony grower on the Kenai Peninsula that had a wonderful peony patch out there for a long time, but the farm was actually located at the base of a hill. And one year there was an overabundance of snow and that snow melt on frozen ground went all the way down onto and in the peony patch and wound up killing 75% of her entire field. So watch the water at the same time. So other than that, um, anybody else have any other questions? Yep, I have a few more here. <laughs> so um, just to follow up on the depth of the roots questions, um, should soil be added to make sure that the roots are covered? If you think they are less than two inches deep, yes, put some more soil on there. Don't pack it down, leave it loose, because if you start packing it down, you're going to create all sorts of issues with water movement between the pack barrier and what was there before you put soil on the surface. Just leave it loose. Okay, great. Um, and then uh, follow up, oh, let's see. Um, also, what was supposed to be put with the white Dutch clover? That's it, just white Dutch clover. Oh, you mean as far as getting it to, to grow is a rhizobium bacteria. That is the inoculant. You can Google this, uh, look for clover inoculant, and they will tell you what you need to put with the clover. This works for everything. For example, if you've had peas or beans in your garden, you should have been putting an inoculant on the seed at the very beginning. The benefit behind that is that once you put it on those seeds, it'll stay there forever, especially if you rotate your crops through there. But in the uh, White Dutch, it'll be there forever. So you don't need to worry about it. If it goes to seed, great. That's just more seed. There's already inoculum in the soil. It'll grow really well with that. So basically, make sure you get a bacteria inoculant for clover when you buy the clover. OK, great. Um, this person says they wintered over some uh, roots and pots, and one is already planted in the ground. Um, they put everything in the hole from the pot. And it's doing pretty good so far. Is that okay? Or yeah, it to, okay. It's okay to do, but just like everything that might have been in a pot for a long time, I'm sure you probably learned this in some horticultural class at one point in time, is to make sure it wasn't root bound and you pulled it out of the pot. In other words, did the roots start making circles inside the pot? If so, then those should be sliced with a clean knife or something like that so that they will then start to grow sideways rather than circle around in that uh, old pot soil. You want to make sure that this peony becomes well established in the new ground and going sideways and keeps going for year to year to year. Perfect. Okay, so what causes flower buds to start to develop and then dry up and not make the flower? 
that's an environmental aspect of how peonies are growing and it happens everywhere in the world, not just in Alaska. So like I said before, those should be snapped off. Let the main bud grow, but everything on the side buds just remove. That way you're getting what would have been a flower or what would have not made a flower and you remove that from the plant so it's not sending energy to those parts and you don't have to worry about it. Just snap them off. Um, that happens to all varieties. It happens everywhere. There's nothing you can do to prevent it. It's not an environmental issue. It just happens. Just deal with it. Okay, so um, do peonies grow at different rates, slower in the spring, at higher elevations? Oh, um, yeah. These people are about three-fourths of the way up Mount Baldy, and theirs are only up about three inches. But we right. Like I said, at the, one of the other things, they'll grow differently the farther north you go. So that's also an aspect of it. But the farther higher in elevation you grow, they're also going to grow slower. Um, if you have a east or west facing slope, they're going to grow differently than if you have a south facing slope. It's all a matter of solar energy warming up the soil and getting that nutrient transfer going at the time when the peonies are growing and they need everything. So basically what peonies will do and all plants for that matter is early in the spring, if it comes up from seed or if this is something you have from transplant, it's gonna expend a great deal of energy producing a great deal of biomass. When it reaches a flowering stage, it's not gonna need as much biomass or energy or the nutrients used to make all that stuff because now it's going to go into its propagation stage. If you let the peony flower fall off, you will actually see three lobes up there that will be the seed cases that have the seeds of the peonies. And so most of the nutrients that were in the plants are now being translocated to the seeds and this goes late into the fall. That's why we remove most of that before it goes to a point where it forms seeds so that the nutrients, instead of translocating to the seeds, now translocate back down into the root for next season. That's the important part we wanna carry through. If anybody wants to, you can let some peonies go to seed, harvest the pods as soon as they look like they're dry and ready to pop open, the seeds are going to be exceedingly small. They're going to be about the size of uh, maybe again a head of a pin. They're really, really little. Um, you can sow them out into a pot of potting soil, leave that pot outside. And if you're exceedingly lucky, and I can't stress that word exceedingly enough, you may get one plant to come up and germinate. 99% of the time, you'll get nothing. That's just the way peonies are. Peony growers are gonna have a heck of a time trying to keep things going. They have a lab to do the propagation in, they have a lab to continue all that, and we don't have any access to that, and I'm sure you guys don't either, but you can play with it and see what you get. Okay, we are uh, just about out of time, so I have two more questions, and they're kind of uh, clarifications. One was, um, can you um, remind us about fertilizer again? And then the other is, could you please explain the cutting of root bound roots more in detail? Okay, fertilizer. What I've kind of stressed before is that if you have peonies growing in a farm, there is no such thing as a peony fertilizer. What you should be doing is collecting a soil sample, send it off to an accredited lab, I like to use Brookside Labs in Ohio, ask them to test for everything, get the data back, and once it does come back, it'll usually be as an electronic copy, send it to me, and my uh, email address was already posted at the beginning. I'm sure Melissa will post it at the end. I will then come up with what your peony plants should need for that spring. The best time to collect the soil sample is in the fall after you've removed all of the biomass from the surface. That way you know what you need in the spring. Don't go taking one now and expect to get a good fertilizer blend this spring. Um, it's just going to basically kind of late to do that. Do a little bit of whatever you've been doing in the past to keep them going. But basically if you want a specific measure, uh, send me the results and I'll come up with one of what you should be applying. 
Um, whether you wanted to do it organically or whether you wanted to do synthetically or a combination of all of them, let me know that too because I can come up with what you should be adding. That part should be fairly clear at this point. For root bound roots, stuff that's been in a pot, I'm sure some of you at some point in time have had a house plant that needs to be replanted. Uh, when you pull it out of the plant, you should see the roots spiraling around the inside of the pot. Basically, it's just a big old mass of roots. And then you don't take that and replant that because basically the roots are just going to keep going in that spiral of the same volume of the original pot. To make the roots go out, you want to go around there and with a sharp knife and just lightly cut through those outside roots on all four sides and then replant. What that does then is the roots that will form from where the cuts are will start going out and they won't go around in that circle anymore. That's just one way of increasing the health and vitality of whatever plant that you're planting. On the other hand, if when you pop these things out of the pot, they don't look root bound, then that's fine and dandy. Just plant them up the way they are. Awesome, thank you so much, Bob. Um, I think it looks like we have covered all of our questions. So I uh, really do appreciate your time, everyone, and especially you, Bob, thank you so much for your expertise. I um, just put Bob's email address in the chat and um, I do want you guys to know that um, it, I will try to get this posted on our YouTube channel um, in a couple of days. And I will be sending you all an evaluation form also in the next few days. If you would just please uh, rate our class. And then also um, there will be a question about um, other programming. I would love to hear um, what, you would, what you're interested in so that we can provide what you guys are looking for. So thanks again for joining us um, and have a wonderful evening.